This presentation will cover the crosshead and connecting rod of a marine engine. Here are the topics we will be covering. We'll do a brief overview of the main functions, discuss how they are built, and highlight some of the deficiencies which are expected to occur. So let's cover the functions of a crosshead and then the functions of a connecting rod. Crossheads are found on large, slow-speed two-stroke engines. The crosshead joins the piston rod to the connecting rod. Its main purpose is to transfer the reciprocal motion of the piston to a rotary motion in the crankshaft. It also helps to eliminate sideways forces on the piston. Low speed two stroke crosshead diesel engines are generally used as prime movers on ships and also used for electricity generation on shore based power plants. The term low speed is applied to engines having a rotational speed of up to 300 RPMs and output per cylinder between 400 kilowatts to 6,000 kilowatts. The majority of two-stroke engines encountered at sea are of the crosshead type. In this type of engine, the combustion space and the scavenge space are separated from the crankcase by the diaphragm plate. The piston rod is bolted to the piston and passes through a stuffing box mounted in the diaphragm plate. The stuffing box provides a seal between the two spaces, stopping oil from being carried up to the scavenge space and the scavenge air leaking into the crankcase. Taking an up-close look at the crosshead, you can see a crosshead pin which is connected to the piston rod and the connecting rod. On either side of the crosshead pin is where the crosshead slippers are located. The slippers run up and down the crosshead guides as the piston and rod are moving back and forth, and they prevent the top of the connecting rod from moving sideways. On a two-stroke crosshead engine, lubricating oil is supplied to the main bearings, camshaft, and camshaft drive. A separate supply is led via a swinging arm or telescopic pipe to the crosshead where some of it is diverted to cool the piston while some is used to lubricate the crosshead and guides. The rest is led to the connecting rod and the bottom end or crank pin bearing. The telescopic pipe follows the crosshead from top dead center to bottom dead center, supplying oil as the crosshead is riding up and down the crosshead guides. The lube oil sump pump is followed by another separate pump which adds pressure for the oil supplied to the crosshead the first pump can be approximately 2 to 3 bar, while the second pump can add 12 bar of pressure to the oil being supplied for lubrication to the crosshead. The connecting rod is fitted between the crosshead and crankshaft. It transmits the firing forces and together with the crankshaft converts the reciprocating motion to a rotary motion. The force acting on the crosshead bearing is always acting in the downward direction throughout the cycle without any time period for which this load might be relieved. This certainly presents a challenging situation for effective lubrication to take place. The load on the pin is always downwards, so it is the bottom half of the bearing which is subject to wear. Because of the high loads, the bearing material is a tin aluminum alloy bonded to a steel shell. Lubrication can be difficult in this setup because no constant oil wedge is formed. As the crosshead runs up and down, there is no constant movement at top dead center and bottom dead center, and thus the oil wedge disappears. Any oil wedge that was formed as the crosshead was moving is gone, and this creates scuffing on the guides. What this also creates is a buildup of oil in the center because of the horizontal pressure and the most movement. This buildup expands out to the left. Oil is delivered under high pressure because it is constantly drained out. So high pressure is used because no normal oil wedge is formed and a certain amount needs to be constantly filled. Thank you for watching our presentation.